Members, and our guests will please rise. Our chaplain, Charles Seastrunk, leads us in prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Chaplain Seastrunk. Our word for today is uh, Jeremiah, the first chapter, the fourth verse. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. Let us pray. Dear God, help us to see your healing and saving work in our daily lives. Guide these men and women to use the gifts that have been given to them to form the good works for this state. Lead us in the right direction to do your will. Bless and preserve our defenders of freedom and first responders as they care for us. That you would bless our world, nation, president, state, governor, speaker, staff, and all who labor in this vineyard. Heal the wounds, those seen and those hidden of our brave women and men who suffer and sacrifice for our freedom. Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Got anything to During the pledge Clerk will read. Representative Dabney congratulating Beverly J. Ray Dowdy of Kershaw. <clears throat> Representative Dabney, Hash Nam sent that roll of the house as objection. Hearing none so ordered, adopted. Misty McGarry. Congratulating Sixth Circuit Solicitor's Office Expungement Diversions Coordinator Julie Small. Ms. McGarry, Ashton Abbott sent that roll of the house. Objection. Hearing none, so order adopted. El Senor Miguel Casqui. Congratulating the Habitat for Humanity. Mr. Casqui, Ashton Abbott sent that roll of the house. Objection. Hearing none, so order adopted. Representative McGinnis. Congratulating Barbara L. Horn. Representative McGinnis, Ashton Abbott sent that roll of the House. Objection. Hearing none, so order adopted. Rutherford Rose. Congratulating Rachel Glenn of USC Track. Mr. Rose, Ashton Abbott sent that roll of the House. There's objection. Hearing none, so order adopted. Representative Caskey again. Congratulating Byron Snellgrove. Representative Caskey, Ashton Abbott sent that roll of the House. There's objection. Hearing none, so order adopted. Representatives Moore and Nutt. Congratulating Dorman Boys Track. Representative Moore, Ashton Abbott sent that roll of the House. There's an objection. Hearing none, so order adopted. Representative Senator Martin, Senate 836, pertaining to Union County, Union County School District. Yeah, I, can't, I can't do that until I have to roll call. Jack, Jack. All right, members, we're in the roll call. Abbreviated roll call today. All members record your presence.
All right, members, let's record our presence. We're about ready to get started. All members record your presence. We're about ready to get started. All right, all members record your presence. We're about to get started. All right, members, we got a quorum. We're about to get started. We'll hold it open a few minutes longer.
All right, all members, please record your presence. We got about two minutes. We'll get started. All right, members, if you're coming in from the back, we're about to get started. Jermaine, how you doing? Good to see you, sir. Should be extremely short. All right, members, if you have not recorded your presence, do so. We're about to close the roll call. All right, last call. We're about to close the roll call. Have all members recorded the presence.
So what I gotta do? Wait a while. Bill. All right, members, check the board. Make sure you signed in. Thank you, David. All right, Mr. Willis, we're about to close it. Ms. Brawley, Ms. Brawley. Hey, Ms. Carver. All right, members, we're about to close it. Polls are closed, clerk will tabulate the quorum is present. All right, members, we're on the calendar. House will come to order. Members will take your seat. We're on the calendar. We're on third reading, local uncontested bills, Senate Bill 691, Clerk will read. Senate Bill 691, Hutto, Barnwell, Barnwell. Pending question is third reading on Senate Bill 691. All those in favor say aye. Opposed nay, the ayes have it. Senate Bill 691 receives third reading. Taking us over to Senate Bill 771, Clerk will read. Hutto, excuse me, 771 to Senator Hutto. Again, Bamberg adopted amendments. Any question is third reading on Senate Bill 771. All those in favor say aye. Opposed nay, the ayes have it. All right, members, if I can get you to take your seat, we have several special introductions today. I got the special introductions here. Ms. Bernstein for a special introduction. Bernstein is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's my... Um pleasure and honor to stand before you today to recognize this uh, pretty remarkable family. And when I tell you about their mother, I think you'll understand why. Um, Bluma Tish Garden Goldberg of Columbia, she passed away on January 21st, 2021 at the age of 94. She was born June 10th, 1926 in Poland and she was welcomed as the fourth of, fifth, fourth of six children born to the late Haskell and Rachel Tischgarten. When she was just 13 years old, in September 1939, at the beginning of World War II, when the Germans arrived in her town of Pensko, I think I mispronounced that, but, and burned the town, including the Tischgarten home, Bluma's mother, gave her, Mrs. Goldberg, gave her and her sister Celia all the family's money and told them to run into the woods and hide. Eventually, after living in the woods for several months, Bluma and Celia were captured by the Germans and taken to work camps. In time, the sisters were placed in Bergen-Belsen, a concentration camp, and later were liberated from Coffering Six a sub-camp of Dachau concentration camp. The Red Cross then took Bluma to a hospital in Germany for treatment, and after a short stint in the hospital, she moved to the displaced persons camp in Landsberg, Germany. At this same time, 
after the liberation in Buchenwald, Felix Goldberg was taken to the same camp. It was there in 1945 that the two met. As he would tell it years later, it was love at first sight. They were married on July 8, 1946, and he was 29 years old and she was 19. Henry, who was here standing at the back with the green tie, their first child was born in 1948. In 1949, Bluma and Felix joined her sister, Sela, and Sela's husband, David Miller, in Columbia. Bluma and Felix were able to make this journey through the efforts of the Hebrew Immigrants Aid Society and the Columbia Jewish community. In May 1955, Bluma and Felix were granted U.S. citizenship. This was one of the happiest days of their lives. The Goldberg's second son, Carl, who is standing in the back, was born, and I'm sorry to, to say when you were born, but born 1953 and a daughter, Esther. And I won't say your birth date, how about that? And that same year, Bluma and Felix opened the Tile Center. For those of you who reside in Columbia, you probably are familiar with the Tile Center. It's still family operated today. Mrs. Goldberg was active in her community throughout her years. And personally, I remember her talked about the story of surviving the Holocaust in the camps. And she would talk to students and communities. And it was very meaningful to hear the story straight from a survivor. And as our survivors are getting older, that first account we're going to to miss. And she made sure that people knew her story, no matter how painful it was, because you never forget, you don't want it to ever happen again. And so you have to be able to have these stories and understand the atrocities that happened so we will not repeat it. And, um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Bluma, Mrs. Goldberg. She received the New Life Award from the Israel Bonds in 1995. She was a woman of distinction from the Girl Scouts in 2009, Order of the Palmetto from Governor Nikki Haley in 2013, and Americanism Medal from the Daughters of the American Revolution in 2013. This lady of high courage will be remembered always for her grace, beauty, gentle nature and loving way. She was the last to survive of her siblings and her husband predeceased her as well. And as I introduced, we, I've already talked about Henry, Carl, and Esther. So we have Henry and Carl Goldberg and Esther Greenberg, who is married to Ira. Henry is married to Gloria Goldberg and Carl is married to Margot Goldberg, who are all of Columbia. And they have um, Mrs. Goldberg had numerous grandchildren and great-grandchildren, and we all miss Mrs. Goldberg, but her, her memory we will cherish always. And I, um, by this resolution, I wanted to recognize this family and Mrs. Goldberg to celebrate her life and extend the deepest sympathy to her family and many friends. If we can... Ms. Bernstein, members of the House, let's stand in memory of this courageous woman, Ms. Goldberg, and let's please welcome her family to the South Carolina House Chamber. Mr. Hosey, House will continue to be in order. Special recognition. Mr. Hosey is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, any of the Orangeburg delegation, uh, Russell Art, Gilda Cobb Hunter, Jerry's here. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. 
to recognize and honor the Beaver Creek Baptist Sunday School Convention of Wagoner for its strong support of college-bound high school students in awarding the first Clarence B. Jenkins Sr. Memorial Scholarship. His son, Clarence Jr., is here to receive it. Uh, Mr. Jenkins passed on. Whereas it is with great pleasure that the South Carolina House of Representatives recognizes those organizations that give tirelessly to the welfare of this great state citizenry. Among the many blessings bestowed upon the people of South Carolina by one such exemplary organization, the Beaver Creech Baptist Sunday School Convention of Wagner is the Clarence B. Jenkins Senior Memorial Scholarship and the first was of the uh, first recipient of the of the Clarence B. Thomas, uh, no, I'm sorry, the Clarence B. Jenkins Senior Memorial Scholarship. I should have given this to Jerry uh, uh, Art. The eyes are really climbing up on me. On September 17, 2018, in program in where it was held at the Bush Upon Baptist Church of Norway, Deacon Clarence B. Jenkins Senior for whom the scholarship is named, believed strongly in higher education. His heart, as well as his mind, was centered on nourishing education, and his accomplishments were numerous and impressive. He was the first black elected to the Orangeburg School District 1, now the Orangeburg Consolidated, Consolidated District, uh, and served that district as a trustee for over 20 years. He became the, uh, he was called, because he was the trumpeter for fairness, that all mankind in the surrounding communities should receive a quality education. It goes on to tell us many things about Mr. Jenkins and his family, they're very present there in Norway in the Bush Upon Baptist Church. And he's done a lot of things and we are not going to be able to cover all today. However, it is recognized here in the House of Representatives of South Carolina among you, our colleagues, 124 of us, and we don't want to let Clarence Jr. know that we relish the things that his father has done and we, we are here to continue his service the best way we can. Because he was the president of the Norway Democratic Party, he did other things in the area. So the members of the House recognize that the success of the state of South Carolina, the, the strength of communities and the vitality of American society as a whole depend in great measure upon the dedicated uh, dedication of organizations like the Beaver Creek Baptist Sunday School Convention and their knowledge, uh, wisdom, and resources to serve others. So now, therefore, without any further ado, the members of the South Carolina House of Representatives by this resolution recognize and honor the Beaver Creek, Creek Baptist Sunday School Convention of Wagner for its strong support of college-bound high school students in awarding the first Clarence B. Jenkins Senior Memorial Scholarship. So without reservations, we present this to Clarence Jr. Will you please stand with me, if you will, Mr. Speaker, if I ask you, sir, for a round of applause for the Absolutely. Members. members, let's stand in memory of Clarence B. Sr. and welcome Clarence Jr. to the South Carolina House and thank them 
for all that they do for this great state. Mr. Wooten, house continue to be in order. All right, members will take your seat. House will be in order. Mr. Wooten is recognized. Mr. Wooten is recognized. House will be in order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, if you don't mind, uh, just direct your attention for just a second to the back of the room with Representative Calhoun. Uh, is Savannah Wolf. Savannah is in the black blazer in the middle. Savannah is a graduate of River Bluff High School this year of the class of 2021. And I went bear hunting last week and I found out that I should have probably taken Savannah with me because of her skills versus my son. But uh, Savannah not only is a graduate of 2021, you'll find out the rest of that story here in just a minute. The, um, uh, she's standing with her dad, Bill, her mom, Sally, and her, her little sister, Isabella. And she's not only um, a great archer, which you'll find out in just a moment. Savannah is a member of the National Honor Society, a National Society of High School Scholars. She's a member of the International Baccalaureate Program. She's currently top five of her River Bluff graduating class and a 2021 United States Presidential Scholars candidate. Last, uh, the last couple of years after being an archery uh, champion around the, the Midlands and around our, our district, Savannah's uh, improved to being top 10 in the world. And not only that, she is now the state champion female archer for the state of South Carolina. So if you don't mind, could y'all help me congratulate Miss Savannah Wolf as our true scholar athlete of the day. Savannah Wolf, congratulations. Welcome to the South Carolina House. Let me tell you, it's outstanding to be top 10 in the world in anything, much less archery. So we applaud your accomplishment. Mr. Britton. House will be in order. House will be in order. We Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Britton, let me recognize you. It, 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 it's unusual when we get somebody who has more luxurious hair than you do with you at the well. So I know this is a very, very special individual, and we're going to recognize you to introduce her to the body. Mr. Britton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, today I have with me, I'm so happy and so proud, uh, actually, I actually have my wife back there. She said that she wasn't dressed up enough to be in here. Yvonne, I wish she'd come at least to the doorstep. She's probably out there yakking, talking to somebody. But I do have with me my beautiful, lovely daughter, Anna Catherine Britton, Anna Kate or AK for short. She is a princess in the Miss South Carolina pageant that's going on this week. Um, I have to brag on her a little bit. She got four awards at school, straight A's, um, Leadership in art, which she did not get from me. Leadership in music, which she did not get from her mom. And uh, at the uh, hesitation to say this last part, because being a politician and, of course, uh, the jokes in here are never ending, also an award for integrity. So very proud of her. And uh, I just want to introduce her to everybody. All right, say hello, everyone. Let's welcome Anna Kate Britton to the South Carolina House, Princess in the Miss Teen South Carolina pageant. Anna Kate, we're delighted to have you here. Mr. Britton, I can tell you, your child gets integrity and gets it from the mama and the daddy. So congratulations exactly. on that. Absolutely. Thank yes, you, sir. Mr. Speaker. Clerk Reed. House resolution by Representative Rose 
Congratulating Jeff Whalen. Mr. Rose Ashenham sent that roll of the house. Objection. Hearing none, so ordered adopt. Mr. Blackwell introduces a sympathy resolution for the loss of Jackie Sewell. Mr. Blackwell Ashenham sent that roll of the house. Objection. Hearing none, so ordered adopt. Robert Williams. Congratulating Dr. Vera M. Davis. Weaves Ashenham sent that roll of the house. Objection. Hearing none, so ordered adopted. Representative Rivers sorrow for the passing of Shirley B. Mack. Rivers Ashenham sent that roll of the house. Objection. Hearing none, so ordered adopted. Representative McCabe. Congratulating Frank R. Stover Jr. Adopted. And Master Sergeant David F. Mills. Adopted. Jr. Anderson, profound sorrow for the representative of the passing of Cordell Blanche Smith Davis. Adopted. Representative Sandifer, celebrating Seneca High School softball team. Adopted. Govan and Hosey congratulating Julius P. Jones. Ms. Govan Ashenham sent that roll to the House of Jackson. Hearing none, so ordered adopted. Yes, sir. We have Mr. King and others congratulating Eddie Lee. Adopted. We have Representative Taylor congratulating William C. Bill Rogers. Mr. Taylor Ashenham, sent that roll of the House. Objection. Hearing none, so order adopted. Senate 844, Senator Harpootlian, Lieutenant Lansing B. Pete Logan. Adopted. Senate 846, Senator Leatherman, congratulating Deborah Ann Duncan. Adopted. And 836, Senator Martin, pertaining to Union County School District. On All right. This is a local bill pertaining to the Union County School District. Representative Gillen, it's local legislation, asked it to go without reference. Is there objection? Hearing, nothing, hearing none will be placed on the calendar. All right, members, we're on third reading statewide uncontested bills. These are on the statewide calendar because they're in the code, but they are local legislation, one dealing with Spartanburg County, one dealing with York. First one deals with um, Spartanburg County voting precincts. It's Senate Bill 153 on page three. Clerk will read. Senate Bill 153 is Senator Martin's bill voting precincts, and this is Spartanburg County. Spartanburg ready. All those in favor say aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Senate Bill 153 receives third reading. Clerk will read. 716. 716, Senator Clymer, York County voting precincts, York County. This is Senate Bill 716, dealing with York County voting precincts. York ready to go. York indicates they are. Pending questions, third reading. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Senate Bill 716 receives third reading from the body. Who do we got left? Ms. Brawley has an adjourned in memory. Ms. Brawley, ready? Ms. Brawley is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'd like today when we adjourn to adjourn in memory of Lee Cato. Many of the people in this chamber probably remember Mr. Cato. He was very active uh, in state politics and in community activities throughout our state. He passed away on June the 3rd. He was the executive director of the Greater Columbia Chamber for the Community Relations Council, where they implemented under his leadership the 421 system that we currently have to elect our city council and mayor in this area. He was also a commissioner for the Workers' Compensation Commission. He was the director of the Department of Alcohol and Other Drug Abuse Services for several years, and he was the executive assistant to then-Governor Carol Campbell, where he earned uh, the Order of Palmetto under Carol Campbell. He retired from the Greater Columbia Chamber of Commerce, where he was the vice president of community affairs. But most importantly, he was a family man and leaves behind to cherish his memory, his wife, his son, Todd, and
and three grandchildren. And I ask, Mr. Speaker, that as we adjourn today, that we do so in memory of Mr. Cato and that these comments be added to the journal. All right, Ms. Brawley requests that when the House adjourn today, it adjourn in memory of Mr. Lee Cato, an outstanding South Carolinian who served this state in many, many capacities, and she also requests that her comments be placed in the journal, which is also so ordered. Thank you, Ms. Brawley. Thank you. Lady. All right, members. Ms. Barla, for something to get in the journal, it has to be written. Oh, okay. But you can just type it. And and Mr. Smith is recognized. House will be in order. We'll be glad to print it. We just have to have something. I will. Thank you. House will be in order. Mr. Thank Smith. You. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, before we get to the budget, the conference report's not signed yet. The Senate's over there taking some votes, so we'll be on the budget here shortly, but I want to take this time for those of you all who are on Ways and Means and those who've been around for a while, today's a difficult day for a lot of us because uh, our friend Deborah Duncan is retiring. If you don't know Deborah, then you obviously haven't written or asked for someone to write you a proviso if you want it done right. She's the only one over here that knows how to do them right because she has worked over here since 1979. She has worked here for 42 years, and I'm going to tell you, there's not anyone that knows more about the way this budget works or how to get things accomplished over here than Deborah, and it's really going to be difficult for us not to have her around. I'm going to tell you, she began working at the Budget Control Board in the State Planning Office in 1979. Then she's worked in the uh, State Auditor's Office, the Procurement Review Board, and most recently she's the Senior Proviso Coordinator for the Legislative Council. And I don't, I think for my entire career, Deborah, you have been that. So uh, she is synonymous with us during the budget time. For those of you who don't know, is when the House starts the budget in January, we get the pleasure of having Angie and Deborah over there with us, and she sits back there and helps and make sure that we are doing things that we're like we're supposed to. And then when she transfers over to the Senate thereafter, and she goes and spends time over there, and she has told me uh, numerous occasions that the House is a whole lot more fun than being over the Senate. So we all know that's true, and if anyone spent any time over in the Senate. Her devotion to this work is second to none, and I don't know how we're going to create a budget and go through a budget cycle without having her with us these next years. But the good news about her is that she loves to travel, and she loves going on cruise ships. And I'm not going to talk about anything else, Deborah. All that's confidential when we have our lunches. But she is going to enjoy herself. She's not going to be idle. She's going to travel, and she's going to enjoy all the years of, of her not being able to uh, go on cruises and enjoy herself. So Deborah, it has been an absolute privilege to have you with us. We wish you much success in your retirement, and I know you're going to have fun, but I tell you, it's going to be difficult and it'll be bittersweet for us uh, not uh, having you around next year. So appreciate you uh, winding it down, and let's give a warm house welcome to Deborah and give, give her our best wishes. Deborah Duncan. Deborah, you will be missed.
Nobody's irreplaceable, but Deborah's the closest thing we have in the house to somebody that is. Deborah, thank you for your service. Ms. Clyburn, is, is Ms. Hennigan here? There's, there's Ms. Hennigan. Um, Ms. Hennigan, would you stand up? Ms. Hennigan, my delegation member, has a birthday coming up, and I believe, I believe it's tomorrow, and uh, we want to wish um, Pat Hennigan, one of the nicest people I know, a very, very happy birthday. Happy birthday, Pat, from the Darlington delegation, <laughs> Rishi Yao, and the whole crowd. Ms. McDaniel, house will be in order. Ms. McDaniel is recognized. Members of the house, I know that you all are probably wondering why I'm standing here today, and it's not to request the reading of the budget, which you all know we killed, and thank God we killed it, right? But the author of that statement has a birthday coming up on Friday. So if y'all would join me in wishing my seatmate, John Richards Christopher King, a happy birthday coming up on Friday. John, stand up. Let's all wish John Richard Christopher King a very happy birthday. <laughs> House will stand at ease. Mr. Taylor has a very, very special announcement about a new family member. House will be in order. Mr. Taylor, I'm going to recognize you when I get order in the chamber. Got a conversation? Take it outside, members. Hopefully, we'll begin dealing with the conference report, but we're going to deal with good news. And Mr. Taylor is recognized to tell us something. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We like to celebrate the younger members of this body when they have their first child or second, or third. Uh, there I am, meet, uh, meet uh, William Heath Taylor. Uh, he was born uh, just about a week and a half ago. He's 10 or 11 days old at this point. And uh, his parents, my son, Ryan Taylor, and uh, his wife, Jackie Taylor, and uh, they are uh, definitely celebrating this. This is uh, our first grandson. We have three granddaughters, now we have a grandson, so for some of you, it's going to haunt you, but there's a name of Taylor we'll carry on. Thank you all very much. Let's welcome William Heath Taylor into the world. Congratulations, Bill. Ms. McDaniel is again recognized. Sergeant, let me know when we're ready. Ms. McDaniel, let me get everybody ready. Well, you ready? Everybody else isn't. Um, we have Representative Johnson assisting her in the back, and Ms. McDaniel is going to talk about that wonderful family we have visiting us today. Ms. McDaniel is recognized. 
Okay, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'm not sure how many of you were here, but um, Senator John Martin represented Fairfield County for a number of years as the senator. And he did a lot of great things for us. So his son, um, Du Bois Bosey Rivers Martin, he passed away on March 16th of 1950, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, April 20th of 2021. And so um, I wanted to have his family come down and um, give them this resolution in appreciation for the many wonderful things that Sen Senator Martin did and also his son, who was very, very intricately involved in the General Assembly and intricately involved in everything that went on with his daughter's wife, his daughter's life. So we have his wife, and she'll raise her hand real quickly. Debo's wife, okay, and then we have children, grandchildren, son, son and okay, and then we have the little cute one. She have her seal circle dress on, so I'm sure somebody must have told her we were doing seal circle today. So, Mr. Speaker, thank you. Thank you. Let's stand in memory and in recognition of Debo's Bosey Martin, who served in the Senate and in this in this chamber for many, many years. All right, House will stand at ease. Members, stay close to your chair.
All right, house be in order. Members will take your seat. All right, house will come to order. All right, there's a conference report that's been placed on the desk. And you may want to hear about it. The house will come to order. Members will please take your seat. Conversations need to be outside. All right, this is the conference report on House Bill 4100. It's the budget. Chairman Smith is recognized to explain the conference report. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and ladies and gentlemen, appreciate your patience with this. Uh, let, me, let me say that uh, the House conferees, before we commence session, while we were walking in here, signed the conference report, and I'm pleased to report to you, an hour and 11 minutes later, the Senate conferees have signed the conference report, so we're going to uh, get to this. And let me just tell you quickly, I appreciate all your support, I appreciate your calls while we were in conference committee. I, I, certainly there were issues that were very important to members and that they called us and worked with us and it was a pleasure to work with you all and it's also a pleasure to work with the uh, <coughs> Senate conferees to help get this report. Uh, as always, I want to begin, I, I want to give thanks to Governor McMaster. Guys, this, you know, I, I, we've been through here and those of us who've been around for a while always realize that We've seen all sorts of iterations of budgets over the years from the executive branch. And what's happened of late with Government Master has been a budget of thought, a budget of collaboration, and a budget that puts South Carolina first. And they are what they, they come and work with us and they put forth ideas that you find that generally end up in our budgets. And that for those of y'all who served over here, that's been unusual over the years, but it's a compliment to Government Master, it's a compliment to his staff, but most importantly, it's a compliment to the citizens of this state to realize that we are trying to work together on moving the state forward and funding areas. So pleased to report to you that this budget is not much different from Government Master's uh, executive budget as it relates to the main priorities, and I appreciate his leadership and appreciate his collaboration as we move forward. Um, there are very few differences in this budget than what we have, than what we normally have, and I, I'll just I'll tell you those differences quickly. Uh, for those, uh, for the uh, state employee raise, as you may recall, we did 3%, they did 2%, and we settled at 2.5%, which is $59 million, and we fully funded the health care for state employees with no raises in their insurance. Uh, we did 4K expansion, as you may recall. We did 10 million uh, 4K in uh, the Senate. We landed on the Senate version, which was closer to the governor's of 34, uh, $34 million. Charter schools is $36 million. That's, that's a little bit uh, lower than what we funded, but more in line with the Senate. Instructional materials to K through 12, we funded at 93 million. That's uh, house version was 82, so we did that higher. Uh, for those of y'all who come from rural areas, something I'm particularly proud of, a couple things for rural South Carolina, and one of them is the, uh, is the fund for uh, rural school districts that are, are disadvantaged. As you know, it's difficult for school districts to uh, be able to repair and build facilities due to the uh, mill and the inability to raise enough money for uh, their taxation and property taxes. So we have got, uh, again, we did this a few years ago, but not in this amount, $100 million going to those areas for us uh, to help assist with construction and, and renovation of schools, which is for uh, Coach Hayes, who was on the budget committee, uh, told me time and time again on the conference committee how important that is for rural South Carolina. So that's certainly a, a positive aspect we've done. Uh, in regards to the other issues, uh, just 
you know, we just had some minor changes with some of the recurring dollars for uh, sustainability of workforce and for uh, position retentions. And I will tell you all where there were differences, we tried to go with the higher amount in most cases to make sure that those that we could retain employees. And then uh, those are basically the, um, <clears throat> the differences that we have. I just want to tell you all while we're doing this, again, I'm going to remind you, last year, we did not pass a budget. We had a continuing resolution. And so for those who want to criticize us for growing government and from having a, big, uh, having a big budget, I'll again tell you we have $525 million of recurring revenue for us to spend. That is over two years, so you do the math on that. That is in essence a 2.5% a growth of our um, of our budget for those two years where the average growth in the last 10, 12, 13 years has been between three and 4%. Uh, so the one good news about this is you probably all, if they haven't released it yet, you're going to hear that the Board of Economic Advisors will certify after the May numbers that there's about $640 million ahead of expectation. So with 10 more days left in the, in the fiscal year, it's pretty safe to say we're going to have a $600 million surplus, $600 million plus surplus. And with that, when we were going through this budget, the one thing that the Senate uh, said that they would uh, make a priority next year, which is, which is something this House has supported numerous times, is to increase our reserve funds from 5% to 7%. And so I think we're all committed to doing that. And, Mr. and Wes Cox uh, has a bill that we'll be moving early in session next year on that. Uh, as I mentioned, education, there is no doubt that this bill, that this report focuses on education. Uh, we'll fund the aid to classrooms at the highest rate that we've ever had in the history of the state of $2,516 per pupil. Uh, we've increased the teacher salaries by $1,000 per teacher and reduced and started the, uh, the teacher start salary is now at $36,000. As I mentioned, we allocated $100 million to the uh, rural and disadvantaged schools. We have funded, uh, funded <clears throat> in every school in the state a school nurse and a school resource officer. So again, we've met the goal of Governor McMaster with this year's budget. And most particular, I want to tell you, we've made a substantial investment in higher education. If you look through your conference report, you'll see that there is a lot of money going to higher education at times when we have not funded higher education and we've got a commitment from every school that they will hold the line on uh, tuition increases this year. Um, I'll, lastly, I'll tell you, we've done things where we have, where we have paid for, uh, for things that we were uh, about to bond. Most importantly, the Ports Authority, we put $200 million to the Ports Authority and we will not be doing the bond bill that was passed the Senate and came over here. We also put $50 million in the Residency Reserve Fund. We paid $32 million towards the uh, pre uh, prepayment tuition that we had closed years ago with a Gallo wine for those there, Mr. Ligon. Uh, those were, uh, we're not borrowing that money as we have passed, uh, we agreed to pass a bond bill, but we're going to pay for that one time. The broadband, there's a number, I hear from a lot of you about that. We have $10 million that will complete all the CARES Act plan and funding, and we'll come back here in the fall and we will deal with uh, broadband and hopefully complete the broadband across the state of South Carolina with the Recovery Act dollars when we get there. So, I, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you this. This is a very good budget, something I'm particularly proud of when I told you other uh, about uh, the rural areas. One other thing for those of y'all from rural areas, as you know, we're going to have the census this year coming up. You're going to see that with most, uh, most of the funding is based upon, um, is based upon the uh, figures, population figures, and you're going to see, especially with local government fund, that there's going to be an extreme redistribution of the dollars that's going to happen and rural areas are going to lose it. Those of you who are from rural areas, whether you lose $100,000, $150,000, that's traumatic to those areas. And so we created a rural stabilization fund that's going to make sure that those rural counties are not punished and that they will be held harmless through this process. So, you know, we look forward to, uh, to uh, that becoming um, law or uh, becoming part of this budget. So. I'll be happy to answer any questions. And uh, lastly, I want to thank my conferees, uh, Bruce Banster 
and, uh, and um, Coach Hayes. Unfortunately, you all have to come and spend four days back there with us where there really was nothing to fight about. But uh, I'm sure it's real pleasurable to come and spend time with me during that. So we'll be happy to uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions. But I want to thank you. I want to thank our staff. And I think we got uh, while we certainly didn't get everything we want. I think we got a very good budget out of this. So with that, I see Mr. Govan has a question. I'll only answer one of his questions, Mr. Speaker. Govan's recognized. Just a very short question. That $1,000 increase for teachers, was that a bonus or is that a permanent salary That's increase? That's a permanent salary increase. All right, thank you. Thank you for asking one question, Mr. Govan. <laughs> Mr. Williams, uh, question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my question has to do with the rural district. Um, and you mentioned that uh, you guys were going to put $100 million in for, for rural school districts. That's right, for, for a $100 million rural school construction fund, so to help with renovation and construction of, of, um, <clears throat> of rural school districts. And I will say one of this is Proviso, Mr. Williams, and again, it encourages consolidation, and this is a Senate proviso, so there is 15% carved out for those who consolidate and participate in that, and that's an incentive for those smaller school districts to consolidate. Okay, because, um, and the reason why I ask the question is because I'm in transition with one of my school districts, um, and and pretty much I'm pretty sure they, you know, they will be non-existent, and I'm just curious about the funding mechanism, uh, how that would work for those who are who are consolidating. For consolidation, yeah, I think it takes in the distribution formula. They they're sitting right there by you. Those are the people who can really give you the answers. I can just fumble my way through it, but I'll tell you there's a proviso, and it does take into consideration consolidation. Okay, it's one of the factors who gets the funding. Thank you so much. All right, members, pending question is the adoption of the conference report for House Bill 4100. Would they be Roll calls required and ordered. We'll vote on the board. All right, members, after the vote, we have another very, very special introduction. We have a couple of things to read, so I would ask all members to remain in your seat. Ms. Newton. If all members wishing to vote, voted. If all members wishing to vote, voted. Proposal closed. Clerk will tabulate. By a vote of 108 to 6, the House adopts the conference report to House Bill 
4,100. By a vote of 107 to 4. All right, House will be in order. Members continue to take the seat. Mr. Kasky, Mr. Rutherford are going to introduce you to a very, very special individual that we've invited to be our special guest today. House will be in order. All folks from the Richland, Lexington delegation are invited to join Mr. Kasky and Mr. Rutherford. Kasky, we'll start when I can get you some order. Mr. Kasky is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have an opportunity today to recognize someone uh, who really needs no introduction, uh, but if, for the sake of uh, tradition, we will we'll do it nonetheless. Uh, in the back of the chamber today is Reverend Dr. Charles Jackson, the uh, individual who has done more for the community of West Columbia and the Midlands at large than anyone else that I can think of. Uh, we are commemorating his 50 years of service uh, as a pastor of the Brooklyn Baptist Church, including all of its separate enterprises uh, and community service activities, um, which I could share with you everything from uh, the Brooklyn Foundation, the Brooklyn Center for Community Economic Change, the Brooklyn West Columbia Community House. Housing Development Corporation, the Brooklyn Community Pediatric Center with the Eau Claire Cooperative, and the Brooklyn Lakeview Empowerment Center, which was recently sealed as the first historically segregated African American school to receive a state marker in Lexington County, and many, many more accolades. Uh, my words simply can't do it justice. Uh, Dr. Jackson, we are so honored to have you not only here with us today, but as someone who serves our community with distinction, who has made an absolutely indelible mark on our entire region, if not the state at large. We thank you for everything that you have done and no doubt will continue to do. So uh, again, we appreciate you being here today. Uh, once I make my way back there, we'll hand you uh, this shiny new certificate to join all your others and all the other accomplishments and awards that you have garnered over the last 50 years of pastoral service. Let's welcome Dr. Charles Jackson to the South Carolina House. Dr. Jackson, what an honor it is to have you with us. Pastor of the Brookline Baptist Church for 50 years. Clark Reed. Ms. Parks and McCravey congratulating Old Mount Zion Baptist Church. Parks, Ashton Ham, sent that roll of house. Rejection, hearing none, so order adopted. House will stand at ease just one moment. Clerk Reed. Introduction of a House resolution by Mr. Garvin congratulating Vivian Jeannie Hanna, Director of Kershaw County, DSS. Mr. Garvin, Ashenham, sent that to roll of the House. Is there objection? Hearing none, so ordered adopted. Last call for congratulatory resolutions.
All right, members, house will be in order. I'm going to tell you about when we're coming back. Um, presumably, um, the house will come back according to the signing die resolution, which is subject to change depending on things going the way we anticipate they go. But we are scheduled to come back Tuesday, June 29th at 12 o'clock. Many of you may want to write that down. Tuesday, June 29th at 12 o'clock. So when I take a motion to adjourn today, it will be to adjourn um, on that date. Excuse me, until that date and time. Anything else for the good of the body members? Anything else for the good of the body? Representative Travis Moore moves that the House do now adjourn. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. We'll see everybody next Tuesday, June 29th at 12 noon.